the rebellious expanded square, a cross training exercise. The original expanded square exercise was introduced in a great little book titled Notan, The Dark Light Principle of Design by Dora Bothwell and Marlis Mayfield, published by Dover in 1991. The expanded square is only one of numerous exercises in the book, which is designed to give the reader artist a better understanding of the interactions of positive and negative space. There's a good chance you're already familiar with this exercise because the book has been around for a while. But in case the expanded exercise is new to you, you might consider purchasing a copy of the book or looking up expanded square online. If you Google those words, you should be able to find numerous examples. I also have a tutorial that's a free tutorial on my website, janedunnawald.com. Essentially, you're working with black paper, you're cutting squares, you follow some rules that include not cutting off the corners, you can't discard pieces, and when you finish, you have a very elegant or sometimes clumsy design element that could be used possibly for something else. If you've never made an expanded square, do a little of the research that I'm suggesting since I can't present the pictures to you in an audio, make a few according to the rules, and then move to part two. The point of this lesson is actually to break the rules by abandoning the rules. Part two, how to break the expanded square rules. Do you have memories of being told you weren't supposed to do something and the next thought in your head was, why not? Or even, oh yeah? That's the rebel in you. If that thought has never in your life occurred to you, this will be a good practice because artists benefit from confronting rules or ideas that are itching to be challenged. In reality, every idea is itching to be challenged. That's why we have hundreds of schools of thought about how to make art, not to mention science, religion, politics, and cooking. Right now, it's time to challenge the rules of the expanded square. If you made two, based on the advice I gave you previously, now you're ready to branch out. Want to cut off the corners? Go for it. Want to cut through the middle? Woohoo! But there's so much more. Review the basic strategy of the expanded square, and then start asking questions and writing ideas in your notebook. A few questions might be these. How much of the square can you remove before the visual reference goes away? If the square isn't there anymore, do you like the abstraction you created? What could a square be made from besides paper? What would happen if an expanded square was dimensional? What if the shapes cut from the square told a story or were a form of poetry? What would that look like? What could you do with the pieces that were removed or left over after deconstructing? What have you thought of that hasn't occurred to me? What will you think of if you just start cutting and playing and see where it leads? Do jump in without overthinking. The first piece is hardly ever a masterpiece, but if you did a square every morning for a week or several in a sitting, you might be interested in seeing where that stream of consciousness leads. One question we don't think about asking is why? Other design books often encourage people to ask, what if? But that's not the only question. Asking why is critical because the answer may prove a method or practice is outmoded. If it doesn't need to be done that way anymore, there might be better products or different goals. It's good to be a skeptical rebel participant in life. Try out as many rebel artist ideas as you can because the proof is in the doing. We can talk all day theorizing whether this or that would work, what color to use, is the paper right? But in the end, the only way we ever know anything for sure is to do it. So blow up a few expanded squares and then look around to see what's next. Keep your rebel artist riding shotgun and trust wherever it leads. Check it out. As you work through this exercise, hoping that you will do it, be mindful of your thoughts. Are you thinking of other art rules you haven't ever challenged? In addition to blowing up the square, maybe there are other practices you could revisit. Making a list of rule breakers you'd like to try is a great start. Get some writing going. Artists respond. Carol Weeb. I loved the rebellious square exercise, but I have to make a confession, Jane. There was no way I was going to do all that cutting. I had too many art projects on the go. 
I love cutting paper, but I've designed a lot of stencils which require the same kind of positive negative eye needed for this exercise, so I did this one in Adobe Photoshop Elements. No one made accusations, and I thought to myself, I really am rebellious. <laughs> Perhaps someone else can send you the real thing. I ended up making stencils for my rebellious square designs, and I think they are an art form in their own right. My insights from this exercise, wrote Mary Ann Ashford, it's the type of rules I'm asked to follow that create my obstacles. I figured for me there are two types, doctrinaire and meditative. The doctrinaire rules are critical and dictated from the outside and are major obstacle builders for me. Meditative rules are uncritical and help me center within. This exercise has helped me understand my rebellious relationship with doctrinaire rules and how that relationship had a negative effect on my creative endeavors. That understanding is very revealing and it inspires me to approach my work with a new mindset. Deborah Franzini wrote, I used to be a super awesome kick-ass rebel, but in reflection I've realized I've gotten a bit lazy and entitled like a Southern Belle sitting on the veranda waiting for her next mint julep delivery. I tried the expanded square assignment and found in many unspoken, unwritten rules lurking just beneath the surface. Rules about perfection and failure, controlling chaos, knowing everything, knowing nothing, what's important and what's not. The voice that says you can go out to your studio after you made the bed and cleaned the house and planned the meals, God knows my husband is a great cook, so it's all my stuff. Walk the dog, it's only a hobby after all. One of the hardest parts of this week was owning that voice. There was something in my weak little rebel voice that reminded me about daring, courage, and being true to myself. I get choked up when I realize how much I've missed her. So no pictures of my expanding squares. Instead, I've played in my studio every day this week, and I'm only slightly guilty about the state of the house. Mariel Musa wrote, this has been a year of major change and loss for me. I find I cannot continue to work in the same way as before. The Noton assignment for me was based on literally dissecting and cutting the typed word sad with an emphasis on preserving the negative and empty space. I then transferred the space to the black paper and expanded outside the square. As related to the losses I've dealt with lately, I wanted to distill and winnow away and make the majority of the image gradually disappear. What remains would represent the succinctly empty but actively remaining condition. Jeanette Davis wrote, this exercise definitely contributed to spending more time in the studio. One of the new rules I made for myself is to shut the door when I'm in there, duh. This simple solution to an old problem came to me out of the blue while I was trying to figure out what to do with my attempt at making a 3D something or other from the square. It was a sudden and emphatic thought and I quote, shut the damn door. A message from the universe, from my rebel artist, or maybe from my nutty archetype. Conclusion. When an activity is new, the doing can be exciting or intimidating. Being present and witness to your reactions is its own rebellious act. So keep going with this exercise if it's new and explore it fully. One goal is to know ourselves better. There's a reason that when we talk about archetypes, we talk about a house of 12. Without knowing <clears throat> much about symbolic language, you can know intuitively which part of yourself is operating in any given circumstance once you have befriended your archetypes. We all have several selves. Sometimes your secure part takes over. Sometimes the less secure part is operating. Having figured out my 12 archetypes, I know when my rebel should lay low and my guide should take over. Sometimes it's my damsel that's reacting to the situation, and then my rebel gambler needs to step in. I like being able to describe and understand myself using these terms, and doing so supports the basic idea we worked with in this chapter. 
The rebel in each of us needs to be cultivated, but in a way that serves our higher purpose. That is, to become the centered, self-actualized artist we are each capable of becoming. <laughs>